song and dance going on. It's Darren Rose Radio. We're going to start today with our latest sponsor. I got a sponsor now, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm wearing these headphones, Soul Republic. And Adela, if you get a close-up on these little guys, they're called the Relays. And I've actually spent, honest to God, have you ever heard of these, Andy? I have not. Soul no. Republic. I've spent the last week hearing songs again for the first time that I've heard like 200 times. I'm actually hearing things in these songs that I've never heard before. These are fantastic headphones. Soul Republics. Uh, they are the Relay. They are also have launched this little guy. It's a Bluetooth speaker. Uh, I'll break this out. It's about the size of your hand. Wrong. Super cool little device. I'm actually going to give one of these away. Uh, all you got to do is like me on Facebook, Darren Rose on Facebook, and I'll hook you up with one of these punk speakers, wireless speakers, come in a bunch of different colors. Uh, I dig the blue, though, because, well, I like blue. Look at my house. Look at the pool. Look at the sky. Yeah. 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 So there you go. Soul Republic's fantastic. Do, get do them I get one of those? Or? I, I wish. <laughs> I wish I, I wish they were that generous. <laughs> I'm just... Wrong. Shoving it in your face here. Uh, like me on Facebook. I'll get you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get you a pair of those. Thank you for that, Soul Republics. All right, here we are. We are getting into today's show. Joining me is uh, an Aussie. He is now an LA. I guess we can call him an LA local now. You've been here long I'd enough. I'd say I'm an Angelino now. Yeah, yeah, you've been here, what, 10? No, not no. yet. No, everybody <laughs> thinks that. <laughs> it just feels like that. Is that a good sign? I don't know. Um, Probably about six six years, probably yeah, six maybe years. maybe even more, a little right. bit more than that, maybe yeah. If if and if there's something that has to do with music, chances are this guy's done it. Uh, Multi instrumentalist, songwriter, producer, he is uh, Andy Clockwise, and he has a new EP out, Dancing World, mm-hmm. and a set of residencies going on this month at the Satellite as well as. Uh, Correct. Are they all at the satellite? They're all at the satellite. That's right. There's three Wednesdays, three Wednesdays and one, th- and one Thursday. Three Wednesdays and one Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're off. Uh, you got a show actually on my birthday in December yeah. in, at your hometown back home. Yeah, in, back in home. Yeah, back where I actually grew up. I grew up on the beach, beaches of Sydney. Were you a surfer? Uh, I was. You would not think it. No. No. No, but I was. Yeah. I was never very good, but I but I definitely had a go. Where yeah. in Sydney? Just right there on the... Uh, do you know, uh, the, so there's, you know, it's be- beautiful beaches over there. So man, have you heard of Manly? I've heard of Manly Beach, yeah. yeah. Manly up that peninsula, I'm from a place called Long Reef. Okay. Yeah. So. And like, how from, as far is that proper from from Sydney proper? Uh, that's like, probably, it is Sydney proper, but it's like sort of 20 minutes sort of out of the out of the thick of it. And your family's yeah. still there? My no, they've all moved to the country now, so I have no roots there anymore. And, so and, 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 and Los Angeles is my home, you know. It's uh, it's it's really nice. I do miss my parents being at the beach. That was that was a good good sort of thing. But I did not enjoy it when I was growing up. Really? really? No, not really. Too many. Uh, it's too, too healthy. <laughs> too healthy. <laughs> yeah. You can't you can't let the yeah, gut when go. You're, when you're a punk rocker, you know what I mean. Like you know, growing up, but like you know, that that was. It's like a surf surf punk place, but you know, I was into like David Bowie and and uh, you know Bob Dylan and Prince and and like they're not really punk rock sort of things, but I was into like Iggy Pop and Lou Reed and that sort of stuff as well. And everybody else was into Pennywise and Ten right. Foot Pole, yeah, and you know? Sublime, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, well, basically, the which I love, cap- which is great music, you know, you know, but like it wasn't wasn't my. I was I was a little indie bitch. You well, and, and yeah. obviously that was kind of that SoCal sound too, Social D and no yeah, doubt. Yeah, that's and, a. But I suppose my the area that I grew up in would be called like the the uh, uh, it'd probably be like the Orange County of Sydney. I okay. suppose, Yeah. Now, yeah. what was your first? Did you have a musical family? Did your parents or, or yeah, brothers? I had a really musical family. In what yeah. in what capacity? Well, my dad was a folk singer, but he became a professional. Um, physical therapist okay. but he he was a folk singer called paul kelly and there is a famous australian folk singer called paul kelly i don't know if you've heard about him before but he is uh he's like australia's answer to probably bob dylan or something like that my mm. dad is not that paul kelly <laughs> okay. unfortunately it's a fortunate name to have uh, yeah, but it's a fortunate name for have but yeah he he always uh 
he instilled a great love of music in all of us. And like, I grew up in a big sort of Irish, Irish Catholic tradition family when everybody uh, stopped betting on the horses, they all sang songs and got drunk late into the night. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, very was, kind of your stereotypical he, drunk singing Irish family. Yeah, and, and amazing too. Like, you know, my, my grandmother would play uh, Chopin on the piano, you know, you know, with a with a fag hanging out of her mouth. And my my dad would sing folk songs with my sisters. My sisters would harmonize and those sorts of things. And we'd all jam and, you know, listen to music and all types of music as well. Yeah. And, and uh, was your dad original songwriter? Was he, or was he doing a lot of the, the classic type Irish? He folk? was an original songwriter, actually. Like, he, he, he definitely, but it's very rare that he whips out one of his originals for yeah. some reason. Because yeah. I, I guess yeah. what I was getting at is your first exposure to music uh, was that pr- pretty much live music around the family, everybody hanging out and yeah, it was yeah. And I mean, we went we went to concerts and you know, like it was it was just very musical upbringing, and which is a I think about it now, and it was just fantastic. You know, like I was just exposed to so much music from a young age, and music was very important mm-hmm. to everything. You know, and you mentioned television wasn't really allowed. You know oh, really? I mean? No, no. So. Why, why not allowed? I, I just, it was just one of those, th- I used to have to sneak in having to watch, there's a, there's a show called Rage in Australia, which is like Australia's MTV sort of thing, and it would start at four o'clock in the morning and go till 10 o'clock in the morning, mm. and I used to have to wake up early and play it really low up next to the television so I could watch videos, oh, so yeah. it was a very magic thing for me, but there was no television in the mornings, and if it was the television, we'd just watch news and current affairs and that's about it yeah documentaries yeah. I mean my parents really saw a probably a great value in me not really uh watching uh you know the crappy smart, television yeah. but we watched good television I suppose yeah but, yeah but, were you a student Did but you then once school? they let us go once they sort of gave up which I think all parents do at some point oh go, of course oh, you know <laughs> yeah. well did you uh, brothers go. and sisters yeah so were they yeah. older yeah, all older. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. was the youngest. By the time they get through the house, and they're like, oh, "We're done." Yeah, let this yeah, guy yeah, do whatever yeah. he wants. So, so I was sort of let to, to let to do whatever I really wanted. So it was not regimented in that sort of way. Uh, what about music? When did you first touch an instrument, or, or were you more of an early singer? What was your? Well, I was made. I was made to. Uh, I was made to play the violin when I was four. Okay. Wow. And uh, I hated it. I hated that instrument a lot. Now I regret not playing it for longer, but I was made to play the instrument. I left it on a train um, on purpose on my way back from school once and then told my parents, oh, you know, I can't play violin anymore. I left my violin on the... And they were like, ah, oh, yeah, you know. So they, so then I started to play guitar and, and drums and those sorts of things. And So you got into all of it right away. Yeah, I, I, instruments in my house were not things that were revered and put in a box or like, uh, you didn't have some sort of like, uh, uh, you know, time to play an instrument. There were instruments sitting around everywhere. Mm. We, it's kind of an odd thing, you know what I mean? Like we, we, like, so you know, that's why probably a lot of my musician friends don't lend me instruments right now. Like they don't lend me their 64 Telecaster or anything because <laughs> I don't really think of them as these things that should be put in a glass case or, you know, these sorts of things. We always had just great uh, pianos, drums, uh, it, guitars everywhere, you know what I mean? Bass it, guitars, you know violins, flutes, all of these sorts of things, yeah. And you could just pick them up at, at, at your leisure. What about... That's how I got into it. I think that's how most people get sort of into music is it's like uh, you sit, you, you find it at a certain age and you kind of just obsess about it for a certain amount of years. Did you, you know? pick up everything right away in terms of having skill at these various instruments? I, I honestly cannot remember. Really, to be did honest. you ever take lessons though, or was it? H- no. How were you? I, I did when I went to when I went to high school. Like I took lessons, but I was already quite far along. So they, they were more like two people uh, 
sharing ideas. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, like so my teachers and me, we'd just like sort of share ideas and he'd show me stuff. And I, I think, I think with music, like teaching, teaching kids how to play music is a great, great thing. But I, I, I was one of those kids who, who responded a lot better, just like sort of tell me what's cool and then I'll go and obsess about it for a long period of time and get myself good at it you know what I mean and like I think yeah and would you emulate your favorites like you were talking about Iggy Pop and you know the artists that you loved did you go out there and uh, I'm going to learn how to play what they're doing figure out that is that how yeah you- I mean I mean you know like certain people remember things in life about uh, you know their rites of passage in life they remember you know the first time that you know a girl broke up with them or uh who they took to their year 11 prom date or whatever or something like that i pretty much remember certain (laughs) musical or creative uh milestones that i've had in my life at that time for some reason i remember when i knew i could play the drums was is when uh i i went and put a band together when we were about i don't know 10 or 11 with a bunch of kids and we were just playing uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit over and over again. That's great. And I had no idea how to play the drums and they knew this. And I could see them all like sort of bitching in the corner, sort of going, oh, this guy, you know, taps on the desk well, but he's not, this guy doesn't know how to play the fucking drums. So I went home that night and uh, and sort of taught myself how to play Smells Like Teen Spirit better than anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I came back and... You know, I was in the band then, you know what I mean? But I remember thinking uh, at that time, anybody who learns to play the drums from listening to Nevermind will be a good drummer. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. No, and, the, and yeah. why do you think that is? I think Dave Grohl is an incredible yeah. drummer. I yeah. don't know. Like, he was sort of like a, a. When did that album come out? Like early 90s 91? or something? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I think he was that time sort of John Bonham or something. You know what I mean? Like, he's incredible. Like, Yeah. But what, and I mean, I agree. I think, I don't think many people will disagree. But what do you think it is about his, is it his structure? Is it well, how I think it's the songs. And I think it was the, the attitude and the the punk ethic that it came from and those sorts of things. That, I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about, uh, you know, maybe a lot of people don't understand how much impact that had on kids my age at that time Mm -hmm. because it went from uh la guns uh skid row skid row guns uh guns and roses which were guns and roses i could i could still handle you know what i mean but it went from that that music suddenly and that television show rage i remember seeing it enter the charts at like number 49 or something and i was just like what the fuck is this? Yeah. You know what I mean? This is incredible. You know what I mean? So those sorts of things are, are life-changing moments for kids, I suppose. And it was for me, definitely. Absolutely. Well, and that whole era of what Pearl Jam was doing. and what sound, I don't know if you got into that. I got into all of it, man. Yeah, I, I, was, I was like, you know, blue hair with the dye still on my face running down <laughs> from when I died at that morning. Cut off army pants. Oh, you were ironic right. T-shirt. You know yeah. that was that was that was uh, that was you know that was me from about eleven years old till about fourteen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you were so you had your first band at ten, and then going forward. I mean, well, we just played "Smells Like Teen Spirit" yeah, over and over. But again. you know what I mean? You, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you made your first, I guess, attempt at uh, you know a collecting a group of musicians to play together did you from mm. there was it just a countless slew of bands after that well then i got sent to boarding school oh boy so yeah for probably <laughs> getting into this music too much i don't know were your parents like holy shit this my son has blue hair and now um, what are we gonna do with him no i think they just my brother was going for for sport and i was i was uh I was not your most, uh, what do you call it, most easy. I wasn't that incredibly easy to deal with at that age. Okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm sure. So I went to boarding school and uh, and we we got on a some sort of partial scholarship or some, some shit like that. And, um, and there I just 
you know, was given the keys to the candy store because a lot of people think of boarding born in school or military school as like uh, some sort of like strict regime. I thought it was just a place where there was no parents and nobody t- <laughs> nobody telling you what to do. Yeah. And you could sort of rig the system, you know what I mean? So I really thrived in that environment and it had incredible facilities for me to go make music or like you know play the drums or great resources or, or yeah. play a guitar or or do whatever and i and because i was one of the music kids i had to you know they gave me extra time to do that you know what i mean mm. and it was it was awesome yeah so did you um, w- did you end up there because you f- you kind of had that and maybe it was legit, but that angst kind of what came along with the cutoff shorts and the blue hair was that whether you legitimately had it, that time of of society, of culture, was to have that chip on your shoulder, that grungy attitude. And was that maybe what freaked your parents out a little bit? It was like, our, our son's getting... Oh, I edge. think they actually quite enjoyed it. Did they? I, okay. I think they probably... Uh, um, uh, I think because they they enjoy, they're, they're 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 old folk folkies, you know what I mean, and mm-hmm. and old old folk people are the original punk rockers, you know what yeah. I mean. They're anti-establishment, they're anti the man, you know what I mean. That's they were true. like yeah. singing Pete Seeger songs together, you know, talking about you know you know civil interesting things like civil rights and like you know things like this and they they stood up for causes that were anti the establishment of the time you socially know what I mean? conscious yeah folks, and they were yeah. socially conscious folks yeah and i think that they saw that that movement of what me and my sister listening to sonic youth and those sorts of things was you know a socially conscious sort of movement at the time really you know what i mean and i think they quite enjoyed it yeah now when did you go from uh cuz i think folks that listen to the latest ep from andy clockwise dancing mm. world uh and and your last several albums they might not hear those influences that we've been talking about everybody from sonic youth pennywise nirvana that whole seattle scene when did you uh transition genres and kind of get out of what uh you were doing banging on the drums and 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 making noise to right. a little bit more into the indie pop thing. Well, I I, I mean from that extended, from that uh, you, you know there was there was a couple of there was a couple of worlds for me when I, uh, you know, so you, you have that that instant sort of like visceral response to music and these sorts of things, and then I really got into all styles of music from like jazz to jazz fusion to like seventies mm. funk. To like you know, my parents had old records, old soul records, like you know Aretha, Aretha Now, which is an incredible album, and like things like that. So I started to listen to that, and then from there, it's just always a snowball effect. You just keep on going on to the next thing, onto the next thing, onto the next thing, onto the next thing. And I have always been a person who's very uh, inquisitive as is into what people do, and and because I, you know. And you got to feel blessed in this sort of way. I actually really love music a lot. I love art, and I love these sorts of things, and it, it does it for me. You now, know let, what I mean? let me let me jump in there and ask: you that. Know? Is it that you love it all, or do you appreciate it all? Because you listen, and and I feel like I'm the same way. I think musically, I can appreciate yeah. most genres. Are there any genres or any facets of music that you're just like I don't? You know, it's it's kind of like not asking to knock a particular kind of art. Like I'm not about sculpture as I much as I am about, you know, oil paintings. I'm not about country as much as I am about jazz. Well, yeah, you know, like I, I mean, you always pick your favorites, and you got it's like life. You have to choose your battles. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You can't be everything to everybody, and you can't get along with, you know, everybody all of the time. You know what it's I mean? Yeah. But you can experience something and kind of like leave it where it is and move on, or these sorts of things, or you know, completely embrace it. But, you know, with, with music, it, it's uh, music or, or art or writing or film and these sorts of things. I think I'm just a fan, right? You mm. know what I mean? And, uh, uh, I, and I think this could be a problem with a lot of music in general or musicians or whoever, including myself, is, is that, you know, your audience are, can see things that, a lot of people who are making it cannot. Yes. And they respond very viscerally to what you are doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and like to think that uh, the audience is not smart or, you know, these sorts of things. I just, you know, or, or, or this is what you're doing and are you and these sorts of things I think is a real, 
no-no because I think me as a fan, I just always can see what I think is good and what I like and what I can connect with and what I think is completely dishonest and contrived mm. and, and wrong. And I suppose for genre, to answer your question, no, I don't, I don't think there's any real bad genre. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was it Duke Ellington or something said there's two types of music, good and bad? I think that's a pretty much what the genre is. You but know what I mean? Also, like, you, know? you know, I mean, and we could take visual art as a perfect example. You know, I can, you know, five people could walk into an art gallery and say, that's brilliant, that's shit. That's great. That's okay. That, and it's the same thing about music. And yeah. you could, I could play five songs for you, and someone like yourself who appreciates it all could say it's all great. And yeah. then you might have someone who's, uh, you know, a radio programmer go, nah, I don't like any of it because they can't. It's how you perceive music and what yeah. the music is going to do for you. Yeah. Um, do you think? And you said one of the problems in music, and I wanted to bring that up. Do you feel like? There is a problem right now in in music of how it's created. Do you think there's a lot of people that uh, because they can, they make music, so they dial no, it in? I, I love that. Do you love I that? I love the anarchy of, of everybody being able to make music. And I mean, you that, don't comes, think from, that, that comes from making folk or being... Bring, bring, bring brought up a folk kid that anybody could pick up a guitar and teach themselves how to play guitar from a chord book and sing a song if they had to sing a song. Mm -hmm. Where I'm a big hip hop fan, you know what I mean? But you know, I'm I'm a big hip hop fan from really back in the day. Yeah. I loved the idea of RZA stealing his friends and Sonic Sampler and making five mixtapes in a month. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and being a and being <laughs> able to do that sort of thing, I, I think it it keeps it a level playing field and I think you know and I don't want to sound like an expert because I am by no means an expert on anything you know what I mean <laughs> um, but I think it's when people say that they're an expert on anything it, it's it can be problematic in letting in things progressing and moving forward and people you know encouraging things you know what I mean mm -hmm. and uh, and uh I, lo I love that the idea of people having more access to making music. I mean, there's always going to be shit. Yeah. And there's always going to be some things that, that come out of, of, of the shit. You know what yeah. I mean? And like, I mean, but as long as everybody's doing it, that always, the, the, the cream usually rises to the top, I think. You know what I That's mean? That's true. Sometimes, yeah. you know. When did you... Sometimes it doesn't too, but you know, who said it's fair? Yeah. <laughs> We were talking earlier about uh, listening to radio and and how you kind of consume music yeah. in different, you know, from you probably have uh, obviously friends that turn you on to stuff. You have sure. uh, the radio. What what do you? Uh, yeah. So I mean, I I love to listen to my friend Stella. You know, she signed to uh, Rough Trade with her band Warpaint, right? Mm -hmm. It's a great label. and. Uh, they gave her heaps of free Rough Trade records. So I've been systematically going through the Rough Trade catalogue on mm. this the turntable that I got. And that's great. Who so you, I've been who, enjoying that. What, what are some of the Rough Trade artists? Well, I just, I love listening to a White Stripes album on vinyl oh, yeah. for some reason. I think they're the only, one of the only albums from the 2000s that you put on on a record player and you're like, oh man, this could be a band from the 70s. You well, know I, think Jack like, White, you know? I think Jack White makes his music with the intention of it being played and made analog, you know, made yeah. a, as an analog record and then played in on analog. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I never listened to it like that because when they came out, I, you know, iPods were out. Yeah. So I always listened to that stuff on iP iPods, you know. But to listen to it as a record, I, I, I've, I've been digging, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, but maybe that's too nostalgic. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to live my early twenties again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. So you, um, what, what were you doing in, in Australia right before you moved here? What was your, uh, was there an event or something that happened where you're like, you know what, I'm going to move overseas? Um, that I'd put out a EP that I made in my 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 friend. She she was really cool to me. Her and her mom they they let me live on their couch and I made her an EP and in between making her EP because I figured out how to use her computer you know what I mean okay. and record an album on it and between making her EP and uh, I made mine and basically um, 
And what was the name of that one? Uh, that was called Song Exhibition. And uh, I, I sent the EP into the local radio station and it just went gangbusters. You know what I mean? And I didn't expect it to happen. And, uh, and then, uh, so it kind of went from there. So as time passed, I'd, I'd put out an album. My first debut album in Australia was a, was a double album right so for my debut album I did a double album and at the time it was not really done to do this when you were an indie rock band but I recorded the whole thing by myself on an mbox on Pro Tools absolutely not knowing what the hell I was doing you know what I mean but I came over in the middle of that time I'd come to the United States and I remember just feeling very, uh, like, uh, in Australia, like, I just felt very much like um, I was in a s- small place surrounded by the same people over and over again. But you could feel that anywhere. Sure. But yeah, at the it's time... it happened here now. But at the time, you know what I mean, you find excuses of what you need to do, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, fuck this joint. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, fuck this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so when, when I went to the MTV Awards and I thought, oh, fuck this, I'm moving to America. And I just sort of put it in my head. And I am obsessed with everything American. I have been since I was a kid. My dad used to give me, give me hassle me about it. I loved everything, you know what I mean? I loved American t- television shows, even though they wouldn't let me watch them. But, you know, I loved, you know... American girls. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I, I loved the whole thing. You know, I still sort of walk into a Hershey... Uh, into a into a uh, market somewhere and I look at a Hershey's bar and I'm like, oh, wow, this is crazy. You know what, <laughs> what I mean? Because it's like out of a movie where, where we come from. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. actually... You know, sometimes I feel like, oh, you know, with the United States is... This stuff that happens in the movies can't happen in real life, but it actually does happen in real life in some ways sometimes in the United States. But um, so I thought to myself, well, you know, uh, I may as well go and, you know, I like a challenge and and uh, it seems like I can do it. I have a visa. Or I went on tour with another band through South by Southwest and, and then... I came and lived here. Um, I want to go back to what you said. You you, you sent the uh, album you made, this double disc, on your own, sent it to radio in Australia, and it took <laughs> off. Uh, what is your history, Andy Clockwise, with radio play? Because I know you've had a lot of specialty, uh, probably a little bit on all platforms, from satellite to internet to terrestrial radio. What's your take on battling radio in America? Um, or do you not even really concern yourself with it? Uh, that's a, yeah. I mean, in Australia, you you send to a couple of stations and it, it services the whole country. Exactly. Um, here, it's a big that covers uh, about uh, two one percent of a city here. Here, here, it's very uh, odd to me. I don't know. I, it's I don't understand it at all. Have you? I, I'm much- stoked that people play us on the radio, and I don't expect it actually. But uh, they do, and that's great. You know what I mean. But I don't uh, know the I, I don't know the ins and outs. It seems like a big, big jungle out there in regards to to radio. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy that people support what we're doing. You know what I mean at at those sorts of times. You know what I mean. Have you but that's help- also changed as well, hasn't it? I mean, a lot of a lot of people aren't consuming music from the radio or what they hear on the radio. You know what I mean? Right. They're consuming I, it from so many different other. Well, I kind of see radio as like uh, network tell or like network. I'm sorry, I can I see it as like your local TV. You have okay. your four local radio stations, TV stations. Let's say that you listen to, but you also have cable TV. You have Netflix. You have on demand. You have movies. You have YouTube. Same thing with music. Or you have your. You know, four or five radio stations that you listen to, yeah. but yet you also have all these other choices for music. Yeah. So those radio stations, for more and more people every year, you're not spending as much time with your old favorite radio stations as much because you have all yeah. these other choices. Especially if your favorite artists aren't on the radio. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. would imagine that you know you're you're in a niche of you're in that dance world. I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, the other thing I want to wow. Do you don't okay. do you consider yourself in that dance? Oh. Well, yeah, a little no, bit. I don't, well, 
hell? I mean, you have an album yeah. called Dance. Uh, you you get the crowd moving, I guess. You're not ED- what I was going to say is you're not an EDM artist by any means. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't say that, but no. there's always time, isn't there? Well, Darren? do you aspire to that? Yeah. Is that what you want to be? No, I um I I've I've just slowly got obsessed with making music like the RZA does. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, I'm sure I'll go back to making music like, like you know, like uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young did again. You know what I mean? But like, uh, I really find making music like that exciting, and uh, and 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 making beats and uh, making samples. But I still write all my songs on an acoustic guitar. Do you? Okay. Yeah. So I don't write songs just based on a beat or these sorts of things or if I do start you know doing something on a on a beat or these sorts of things I stop and I'll go and write a song traditionally for some reason I don't know why I just maybe it makes me feel uncomfortable or I I, I don't know and these sorts of things but because of that sure I mean there's a lot more electronic influence come through but it's it's sort of like a natural progression for me in a lot of ways. Um, I want to go back to what you said about making beats. Have you ever reached out to any rappers or any any hip hop artists and said, "Let's let's work together"? Because um, I could yeah. definitely see you. I have. Yeah, yeah. I've done a track that I've never released with uh, the Lady Tigra. Um, okay. Have you heard of the Lady Tigra? Yeah. Did a song called Animal Kingdom that I've never released because I've never been happy with it. Um. Not from her, from my perspective. And then uh, I'm working with a couple of like sort of hip hop people at the moment, and you know yeah. what I mean. I just uh, I just hope I do all right because my beats for the hip hop world can, some, can sometimes be a little bit crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's good. I mean, I think people need. I think the the industry needs things that are outside the box. And, sure. Um, and you have that dance element. I mean, I you know. You have, I was going to say, for the, you know, you have the residencies going on at the Satellite right now. For those that haven't seen an Andy Clockwise show, you know, you, it's a party. It's a, it's a vibe. Yeah. Well, I like to think of it as a religious experience. There you go. That works. <laughs> no, hey, um, I, I, I want to just kind of like make a, have you seen, have you seen James Brown perform before or? I have not. Have you seen Nick Cave no, you know these sorts of shows like this are things that really do it for me. Where you feel like something could go wrong, you know what I mean? And something you're experiencing in a moment that you won't actually experience again. And a few people have it that I've seen it. Like I've seen a Bjork show, and she's she's had it. The last show I saw at the Bowl was incredible. The last Nick Cave and the Bad Seed show I've seen every Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds tour mm-hmm. since I was 12 years old, and this last tour was something even different again you know what i mean what do you mean by something could go wrong i like that expression well like you know where somebody is actually it's it's on edge you know what i mean it's not like i'm here playing the songs there's actually it's almost uh more important for the artist to be experiencing the show than even the audience that they're, they're getting something incredible incredible out of it as well but i yeah. think the live performance is more like a group like what you're saying, like where a, a string could break on a guitar and you got to just go on. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, something falls over or whatever. You just power through. Yeah. And they're the shows that I loved. And they're the shows that as a, and that's f- as a fan again, yeah. you know what I mean? I, uh, you know, enjoy, enjoy to see, you know what I mean? When I see a show like that, I, I come away from it and I'm, I'm on cloud nine, you know what I mean? And, and that's I, your punk rock roots, right? I mean, those I are those. I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, before we wrap up, I usually like yeah. to uh, pull a random question off my list of questions sure. here. But uh, just before we wrap up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A band that I, I think really sort of like musically spoke to me uh, in regards to electronic dance, but with some sort of like backbone to it was the LCD sound system. Oh, for sure. Broke up, you know what I mean? That was that was something that that I think in the last ten years was something that I was like, wow, that's that's amazing, you know. Yeah, yeah and what uh, you mean is kind of an influence for you. That was one of those electronic bands that I thought sort of melded where I what I love about uh, traditional rock and roll and songwriters and and you know in good words and and awesome melodies and 
a sort of fuck you uh, sort of aspect to it that I I really loved. You know, you know, obviously you're you involve the synth aspect of. You know, we talked about drums and flute and violin and guitar and all that. Mm. But, you know, the keyboard is a big element of what you do. And I think, you know, a lot of people think keyboards. They think, oh, manufactured music. Uh, it's too new wavy. It's too synth pop. But, I mean, you bring a piano into any rock song, it's epic. Yeah. You know, you bring a good a, a good melody from a keyboard from a piano into any song and it's going to add another layer yeah and you know the the new wave's always been an influence that runs through i think every genre of, of yeah. music i didn't get into this to be told what i can and can't do and what's cool and what's not cool and uh and a synth is is not real music or uh you know guitars are, or rock and roll is dead or yeah all, you know, shit, all, yeah. all of this sort of shit yeah. uh andy clock give me a list bro <laughs> uh, best piece of advice you've had uh, in your career that you've received? Uh, my friend had this um, uh, Eastern European father who really thought that we were idiots, you know what I mean? When we were kids, he just thought we were little artistic knobs wearing makeup and, you know, you know, wearing tight clothes and blah, blah, blah. And he was always like, giving us shit all of the time and but then you know him and me were having this long lofty talk about about you know what we should do and what the world should be like and stuff like that and he just walks in he just goes just choose what you're gonna do and just go at it hammer and tongs and that's it that's a great line yeah (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) what about the most always stuck with me Uh, what about smart lady what about most influential person uh, or, or mentor type person in your life that you've always looked up to, Bob Dylan. Yeah, just because I mean he's straight up. Yeah. You were inter- and you were introduced to him early on. It sounds like through those folk influences and yeah, yeah. Well, there was a he was he played the state theater when I was eleven, um, and I sat on the stage with him uh, because some hippie woman came and dragged me onto the stage and. Uh, I never liked him. I thought it was dad music. And then he was chatting to me during the show, saying stuff like, oh, you know, did you like that song, kid? You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it was all right. You know, <laughs> you know blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, so I just thought it was dad music, but I then really got into Bob Dylan. I just think Bob Dylan's the best thing that's ever happened. <laughs> and what, and <laughs> lyrically. Even David Bowie, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. I love them, you know? Uh, and last question for you, two-parter. They're my heroes. Yeah. 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 Good ones to have, for yeah. sure. Who would you want to work with? If you had the choice to work with anybody in the studio, collaborate with, who would you like that to be? Well, I'd really like to work with James Murphy from... from um, LCD. LCD Sound System. Uh, but, you know, they say don't meet your idols. You know what I mean? Yeah. And... Uh, but I'd love to work with him, and I'd really love to work with this guy. Uh, I don't know if you know um, the Magnetic Fields. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the... Stephen Merritt. Stephen Merritt, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd love to just write or produce one song with him. He's I'd, a great I really songwriter. think he's something special. And 69 Love Songs is an incredible album, I thought. And, yeah, I'd really like to work with him. But, you know, look, man, I'd like to work with anybody, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's either going to it's either gonna sink or it's going to swim. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know. What yeah. about, what about uh, going out on tour with, if you could be a part of a show, uh, you know, go out on tour with a, a band or two? Who would you want to go out with? Probably Beck. Mm. Yeah. Um, especially Beck, uh, mid-90s, Odelay Beck. Oh, yeah. Odelay was a great album. Yeah. That, that was one of the best shows I ever saw. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, Andy Clockwise, yeah. Uh, check him out at clockwise.net. And oh, yeah. I got to ask, I got to ask the, the, the standard question of Clockwise. When did you become Andy Clockwise and not Andy uh, Kelly? I worked at a video store in, um, in the Northern Beaches where I grew up. And uh, I was, it was one of those last of the independent video stores before mm-hmm. Blockbuster bought it. And me and a couple of my friends just sort of ran the joint. And uh, we were, you know, have you ever seen... Um, Clerks? Now what's that, High Fidelity? Have you oh, seen? yeah, yeah, yeah. We were like the High Fidelity snobs about, film. about films. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> such little pricks. And uh, 
our manager gave us all nicknames, and my nickname was Andy Clockwise, because in Australia, Andy Clo- anti-clockwise means counterclockwise. Anti-clockwise. Yeah. So okay. counterclockwise here means anti-clockwise in Australia. Okay. Right? Yeah. So then uh, when I was trying to find a name when I went solo, I just sort of took that and ran with it. Uh, yeah. We'll check them out. Facebook, uh, clockwise.net is the site, right? Yeah. A couple of shows left uh, at the satellite. Then he's going to be back in his homeland in Australia. And any shows, uh, any plans? What's 2015 looking like for? Uh, we're going to release an album. Full proper album. Yeah, I'm going to do an album. I'm going to release music, 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 music for the next five years of my life. Um, yeah, I'm just going to do lots of remixes, lots of. Like one offs, lots of B sides, lots of stuff. I'm just going to release music, videos, music, video content. Uh, you know, I hate that word, but like, you know, whatever. Andy Clockwise, thank you so thank much, you, man, mate. for hanging out. I am Darren Rose, Darren Rose Radio. Uh, like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Darren Rose. Thanks for checking out the show.